so let's first go to Bridge Original. I have a nonlinear time history that I ran to. The reason for running before coming in is it takes an hour. It took me about an hour to run it. Uh, so I didn't want to sit here for an hour waiting for the results. I'll show you some stuff. So here's our structure. And uh, this is the original. Let's see. Okay, so this is where we left off last time. Uh, if we say display, show plot functions, and joint four, this is the displacement over time. It's about uh, a foot of displacement, a little less than one foot. Uh, this is running the time history analysis. And I think that's, I haven't provided, so I gave you the ARS for, but I didn't give you the uh, earthquake portion. So, okay, I'll provide that this evening. Yeah, I'll send out an email saying I can provide it. No one you to give you one. Um, why don't we, while we're here, uh, using this particular example of the question that I'm running, um, let's look at the columns. So, you see this one here? That's label number 38, right? So, I'll say display. Show plot functions. This is the linear elastic time history analysis. This is for designing my columns. And uh, say, well, see, it's there, frame 38. So the way you create it is uh, define plot function, and then you go to uh, add frame forces there, and then add plot function, and then type in 38. And then what do I want? Not axial. I'm not as interested in that. I'm interested in moment 33 because I'm looking at the 2D analysis. So say OK. And then I'll click that out, bring in, they call it, I already had one because I was playing with this before, but frame 38 one is what we just created. And then display, and this shows me the bending moment over time, right, at the bottom of that frame element. So you can see it goes up to, this is times 10 to the 3. And we're in kip feet units here. So you can see it's around 60,000 kip feet. This is linear elastic analysis. And then you can do the same thing for, in this example that we were running, now let me get out of here for a second and back up. We have the bottom and the top. The top's going to be slightly smaller than the bottom, right? We expect that because of the flexibility of the superstructure where this is a fixed connection at the bottom. And then on this side, it's pinned. So there'll be no moment here. But I do want to watch the top, the bending moment at the top of this. And in that case, let's look at this one. This is 47. So you say display, show plot function, uh, uh, define plot function, go to frames, these are our members, add plot function, what did I say, 37? And then moment 33. But in this case, uh, relative distance, I'm going to put a 1, which is the top of the number. Okay? And you can go look at that member to make sure which, which, where does it begin at the bottom or the top? But I know that it's at the top. So I say OK. And then uh, move that one over and then bring over uh, 37, which is what we just did, right? Oh, OK, I did something wrong. <coughs> it was 47. Uh, why didn't you tell me? You wait all the way. OK, 47? OK, let's get out and, and verify. So it's this one. See, I was talking 47. It's kind of light, but okay. And uh, to make sure you know uh, which one, it, which is the top or the bottom, I right click there, 47 location. It starts at the I and J. And the I is the beginning. It's 43, and the end is six. And those are the nodes. And then I go click on this one. Instead, that's six. That's, so that is the end of the top. I want the moment at the top. So okay, 47. I won't make that mistake. mistake again. Display, show plot functions, frames at 47, moment 33, and at the 1, relative distance, that's 100%, that's the very end. Say OK. So it's called 47 1, because I had already used 47 before, before coming. So I bring over 47 versus time, and there it is. Okay, so it's similar. 
it turns out that the moments, there are about 60,000 of them. You can see it, right? This is minus 60 right there, and this is plus. If I go look over here, it's uh, minus 60, about 61,000, and plus 58,900. So it just happens that the two are similar, uh, the bottom here and the top there, because this is fixed fixed, which is stiffer, but it's longer, and this is shorter, which is thinner at the bottom, right? If you change the dimensions, one might be maximum 20, the other one 80. In this case, it's a kind of a balance. So what I want to do is, you know, I'm designing my column. What are we going to do? We're going to take elastic moments and divide by what? Let's say six. So let's create. Um, I'll unlock this, and then say uh, define um, section. Come over here. Um, hinge properties. I'm going to create a plastic. Add new property, uh, say user defined. Okay? So user defined, I call it a pH. You can call it a V1, you can have multiple different ones. You can pH1, pH2, whatever. And then uh, deformation control, leave that default. And then here, switch this to a moment three, right? And then see this, it says use yield moment, deselect that. I want to give it the moment. And that's that where it's one. That's this point up here. And then the moment, the plastic moment that I'm designing this for is my nominal design moment. I'm going to say it's uh, 10,000 kip feet. And I don't know what the rotation capacity is. Um, let's say. No, leave that as one, and we'll we'll put this in here. Okay. And see these three down here. Make all these one. Like that. That's just so you don't get a bunch of colors. What's what we're doing is forcing it to when it goes pink, it uh, shows that it's yielded, uh, plastic hinges form, and if it goes yellow, it means fail that it, the rotation was such. And then we're going to adjust things in here. So this is moment SF, and this is moment over SF. So right here, this one is this is this point up here. It's going to be 10,000 feet, and then I'm just going to leave this as a default, unless uh, moment curvature shows that it's a different number there. So this is at the at your ultimate moment, it's 1.1, so it's about 11,000 feet. That's what we're saying. So you can put in, you can change this. So it's just scaling it. M over SF is 1.1. Okay, and this is SF. What we're going to do is over here, uh, when it first forms the plastic hinge, is zero rotation. That's what that zero is, right? So it's rigid, and then it goes plastic. And then 1.1, 1 .1, uh, this is that point right there, this yellow, that C is that one. That's where we have failure. I don't care about anything after that. Up until there, that's what I want to model properly. So I'm going to put in um, a larger number, like 0.1. Yours would be based on your moment curvature, where you switch it to moment rotation analysis. But, okay, and then it looks funny, right? Because these numbers, you may need to be bigger. So I'm going to say 0.12, and let's say 0.1. And it's symmetric. So it goes up, forms a full idealized plastic hinge. I have a straight line to my ultimate moment rotation. And then this is just a failure line. That if it goes beyond there, it loses force, loses moment capacity. And then it has hysteresis that, that runs around underneath this envelope. This is just a monotonic envelope in the two directions. Um, let's also change this from isotropic to, uh, let's use a Takeda. This one, the pivot is mine, but the last time I tried to use it, it wasn't working right. I'll check it uh, this evening if it's working right for this application, and then I'll we can use that. But uh, Takeda is a good old one. Um, and then that's it. So you say, okay. Oh, oh, that's because I hit. <coughs> okay, it, there's already one in there. Let's see. Okay, so that's it. Yeah? You said user defined instead of concrete. What it does when you say concrete? I don't know. I just want to define it myself. Uh, I don't want. I think concrete probably would work, but if you uh, specify steel, for example, then it wants to determine the yield moment by calculation based on the section dimensions and stuff. And I just want that. I want to give. I want complete control. So I use user control so I can define the moment rotation response. 
Because I'm doing my MoMA curvature separately. Is it available to the model that it's using a concrete as a or a geometry? Uh, you mean the hysteresis rule? Yeah. I don't think so because you select it. I don't know. Maybe the default for concrete is just pick the cater of little, for example. For steel, you wouldn't use those. I don't know how version 15 works. So. I mean, I didn't go look. You could click around and see. Um, so now we have this thing called plastic hinge, and uh, we're going to design. This one has similar uh, demands, so we're going to uh, select. We have to do it sort of separately because this one is going to be at the bottom of the member. So I'm going to say assign uh, frame hinge, and then just here, pick pH. You could have, let's say, 10 different plastic hinges, and we pick that one. And then relative distance is zero, which means it's at the bottom of the member. And again, you can go in and see where's the start, where's the end. Say add, and then say OK. So there it is, you see. And it is at the bottom. So let's say there. Now these two, I want to put the same one at the top of this member and the top of this one. So I've selected two frames, same approach, I say assign frame, hinges, uh, I select which hinge, at my definition, plastic hinge, and this time I say relative is one, say add. So it's at the top, <coughs> say OK. So one, two, three plastic hinges. Everything else is linear elastic, it's at three millimeter, right? Rolling back and forth. If I want to get fancy, I could add uh, soil springs and nonlinear soil springs, but I'll let you guys, uh, if you do that, you use axial nonlinear stiffness to represent that. So these are moment location hinges. Uh, and then you'd run it, and then what you'd see is the maximum, I'll get out, I already ran this, and so, uh, like I said, this takes one hour to run, so I don't want to sit here chatting for an hour. We'll uh, pull up the one that I ran. Probably in this one. Let's look at 